Okay, here's Croker. Croker was uh, a little bit different. There's a lot of common tendencies you're going to see amongst all these. Uh, Croker's got some uh, different things going on, but it's also going to be a good a good way to see some of the things I'm talking to you about. I'm just going to let him run a couple times and I'll talk about it. So right out of the box, you can really see he really keeps himself level the whole time through. So right there at release, notice how everything is level to the ground. His hat's parallel to the ground. His shoulders are, are squared to his target. Everything is in good shape. Uh, his back leg is on the ground, um, dragging through the ground. So he's really solid right here as far as his foundation and the way everything from his hips down are working. His glove is unique to him as well. Uh, in the camp we've had over the last little bit, we've really been working on as fielders keeping the glove up when they throw. But he still lets it drop down behind him, as you see, once the ball's completely gone and now he's playing defense. He'd be much better served if his glove were out here in front of his body somewhere there or even somewhere in there to help him defend himself as well as to stabilize everything going on. So let's take him back now to his kick, uh, his setup. Again, a lot of these guys are all kind of doing the same thing. As they go to kick, notice how much towards second base he, he starts to travel. That's uh, a big detriment because he's kind of going around the block to get to where he needs to go as opposed to taking a direct route. So if the moment that he brings that knee up off the ground, or if he could just lift the knee, take the knee this way without having to take the knee and body that way, he'll do much better. That's going to be the same with all your guys. Now once he kicks, he's getting himself traveling pretty decently. I like the height of his leg kick. We can let his foot hang a little bit differently. That's just a result of lifting through the foot as opposed to just lifting through the knee and letting everything below the knee uh, hang down. But if I put a line on him where his hips are now, that's not a very good line to see. That's a better line. There's where his hips are now. And then if I take him back, notice how far his hips moved forward as he kicked his knee. That's the GFF factor, the going freaking fast. That really helps a ton of that to get him already moving forward and again here he's a little bit down with his hat that just could be that he's got his hat pulled down because his eyes and everything don't look obtrusively looking down but again nice and balanced through there that's so so important this whole time now I will say he tends to kind of duck his head down a little bit as he goes but I wouldn't worry about that just yet again at opposite and equal or at foot strike one of the things I would like to see him do differently is with his foot I really don't care if they land on the toe or if they land on the heel. That's gonna, uh, the heel of their foot. That's going to vary with the kid and, and how they feel. I feel like he is really putting his left foot and left leg down, trying to say make that toe point at his target. So a lot of coaches will tell kids that that they want that toe to be pointing at home plate when they put their foot down, and that's really doesn't matter. It's sometimes easier for him to keep that foot closed a little bit by having that foot turned or from the ankle kind of angled over to that way to some degree. That helps to hold on to hip and shoulder separation. So as he lands, boom, his foot's just now starting to touch the ground. As he lands, see he's short through the glove. What the result is there is that he's opening up through his left side. He's already started the throwing motion. His hips are firing good when he lands, his hips go, his shoulders go. He's got a very good example of a decent sequence working here where his hips have fired, his shoulders have fired. Notice how much the elbow has lagged. And then when the elbow fires, notice how much the hand has lagged. So he's really going to set himself up for a good external rotation and internal rotation coming through right here. And again, notice how the foot and everything is balanced. I like where his glove is. It's up. It's short, it should be in front of the knee. Our numbers say two to four inches in front of the plant knee. And then, boom, it's out. And when he releases, he's way out front with it, right there. He's releasing the ball right there. Our numbers are six to eight inches in front of the plant foot at release. His arm slot is unique to him as well. 
Notice he's not over the top. I wouldn't say he's sidearm. If I spin him around, I've got another point of view at him of him. We'll be able to look at his arm slot more. But definitely, his arm slot is not over the top. And I wouldn't try to mess with it. Let it evolve. It's going to change on its own. Anyway, that's what I got for Croker. Hope it helps.